Our very last consideration is how vector addition and our Vesper geometries affect the dipole moment of a molecule. So we did talk in a previous video about how the difference in electronegativity gives us a basis for the magnitude of a bond dipole. In a molecule, the vector sum of individual bond dipoles overlaid on a Vesper geometry shows the basis for the dipole in a whole molecule. And you might be asking, why do we even care about this? Um, this is hugely important to the properties, um, the physical properties of compounds that we rely on and deal with on a regular basis. So that um, polarity in a molecule is the entire underlying structure of why, say, oil and water don't mix with each other. All right, I wanna give you a couple of examples. Um, there is a video on Canvas if you need a vector refresher. Now, this video goes into more depth than you will actually need. So the only part that you need is the basic addition of vectors for what we're gonna do. So I wanna look, classic example we always start with is carbon dioxide. So the Lewis structure and the Vesper geometry look remarkably similar because we just have a linear molecule here, right? The steric number for carbon is two. Now the individual bonds have a dipole. So the difference in electronegativity between carbon and oxygen is 1.0. So each bond is polar. And you know how to indicate these bond dipoles. You redraw my picture here. Oxygen is the more electronegative atom. So I would draw an arrow pointing toward the oxygen that has a little hash mark near the carbon. And so that is for my carbon oxygen bond on the right and for my carbon oxygen bond on the left, it looks like this. And if I add these vectors together, the vector sum is zero. They have the same magnitude, but they have completely opposite directions, so they cancel each other out. So CO2 does not have an overall dipole, mo dipole moment, even though its bond dipoles are pretty decent, right? That's a decent difference in electronegativity. We would classify that as a polar covalent bond. However, because of the geometry around the central atom, we have a nonpolar molecule overall. All right, one more example. Let's do H2O, which we have looked at already. It's a bent molecule. The difference in electronegativity between oxygen and hydrogen is 1.4. Now I'm gonna draw this version of my bent structure where I have my two bonds in the plane of the paper and my lone pair, one is coming out of the paper, one's going back, but it, it's fine. We don't need to add anything 
to represent electronegativity of a lone pair because that doesn't exist, right? The only way that the lone pairs are having an effect here is by how they change the geometry of the other bond dipoles. So my individual bond dipoles, oxygen's more electronegative. So my arrow points toward oxygen and I've got that little hash mark by hydrogen. And then that arrow points toward oxygen with a hash mark by hydrogen. So when I add these together, the dipole that I have as a result, get my molecule redrawn. The, if we were to use kind of an X, Y, we don't have any Z component for anything that we've drawn. This is my kind of axis system that I'm working with, um, which is the standard axis system that I ask you to use for drawing things in 3D. The X components of my two vectors um, cancel out, or they end up with the X component starting here in the middle between them. And the Y components add together so those two vectors added give me a molecular dipole that's written here in green. So H2O has an overall dipole. And in this case, it's actually pretty large. We consider water to be a polar molecule. 